just said I was gonna do something to my very... <laughs> Can you all pretend like my hair looks good? Like, I just wanna show you something right quick. That's all, can't you just stop buying? What do you expect? Like, what do you all want from me? Is anybody home? Hey, hey. Hey, Sandy, how are you? I wanna show you something in the kitchen. Let's have some tunes while, um, Oh, I love this song. While well, we're waiting to see if anybody's gonna come on. <laughs> you know I love this song, I really do. I have not seen this, heard this song. Woo! Oh, yeah. Can anybody name that? Can anybody name it and claim it? I can't see a dang comment. Oh, there you are. Hey, people, what is going on? I'm fixing to show you something quick. I'm going to show you a shake and take dressing that's like that to make, and you don't even have to dirty up the blender. But if you want to, you could, and you could create more volume stretching out the fat. Why would you do that? Because I was just speaking to my group the other day about a typical, this dressing I'm fixing to show you has less than 200 calories coming from fat and it makes like a pint size, okay? That's a lot of dressing that's very pungent because it's not stretched out. Now, if I wanted to make a 32 ounce, also known as quart size, I could stretch that out. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But I was looking at this recipe the other day. This is very typical of a dressing that you might find. I'm gonna come on here and give you the lowdown of this, but I just wanna tell you, why would you wanna do this? Because yes, we need plant fat every day, but we don't need, I don't know, 1800 calories from fat in your dressing. You remember back in the day when people thought, you know, salads were healthy and all this? I'm talking about like in the 70s, you know? But really a little, yeah, early 70s before fat-free came out. And you realized if you doused this salad with blue cheese dressing, all of a sudden it wasn't that healthy anymore. And this dressing right here has about triple the times of fat of a Big Mac. Yes, but I know it's not the same kind of fat, but that's, it's not a real. My daddy's calling and here's what he's gonna do. He'll call back, probably not another time, but three or four times as if I don't work on his phone. Anyway, so I wanna tell you something. Let's take a dressing, for example, that's got, um, here we go. Like a garlic pesto dressing, for example. You got one cup of pine nuts, 900 calories, 92 grams of fat. That's not much volume, okay? You got one cup of cashews at about 720 calories, 52 grams of fat. You got two cloves of garlic, we'll call that neutral. One cup lemon juice. You got some scallions, some rosemary, some garlic powder. You've just created a dressing that has 1,720 calories from fat alone with 144 grams of fat. Okay, if you're gonna do that, you could do it. But realize you need to have a serving size of that as if you're eating a commercial high fat dressing, right? But luckily you're not having the salt and chemicals, but do you see what I'm saying? That's a different thing. So if you're eating half the blender full of that dressing on your zoodles at night and you don't understand why you are not losing weight, furthermore gaining weight, that's a lot of calories, that's 720 calories right there from your dressing alone. Did you eat anything else in the day? Because if you did, we got a problem. You see what I'm saying? Not that you can't have more than 720 calories, but that's all from fat. Are y'all picking up when I'm laying down? So let's come to the kitchen because I want to show you something. Let's say you're going to have a dressing that has, um, here's, here's a good example of one. You got some lacuma powder, about one tablespoon. Um, you've got some about three tablespoons to even four tablespoons of raw hulled hemp seed heart. That's about 140, 180 calories, or let's call it 160, depending on how much of that you put. You've got some herbs, you've got some um, 
I don't know, you want to put some salt tea in there. So you've got some dulse flex or wakame flex. You got some lemon, lime, apple cider vinegar. You bulked it up with some celery. You got to have about a 210 calorie dressing right there with not that much fat in there. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Bam. So come to the kitchen with me. Did you want to? Um, so I hope we don't lose connection, but I want to show you. Keep it. I think we'll need that. Okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm kind of tricky about the lighting in here, you know. Um, still, how's this? Yes. Okay. So here's what we're having tonight. First of all, I'm going to put these in the dehydrator, perhaps. Um, and I, if I wanted to do that, just to limp them down. These are carrot noodles, um, organic carrots of many colored noodles. And if I wanted to do that, what I would do is I would take a dish like this, okay, which is shallow. Do y'all see? And I would put water in the bottom. I would put the noodles in there. Then I would put them over to my dehydrator, okay? And what I would do is I would take out the bottom tray, okay, or perhaps two. Are y'all seeing that? So you take those out, and then in there you would have enough room to slide your your platter in there, okay? I have another um, pampered chef that's good for that too. It's very shallow. So anyway, the point is you put it about 115, make sure the noodles are moistened because you're not trying to dry those out. You're trying to limp them down and keep them raw. Um, also, if you want a warm existence of your noodles. So what we have right here, we're gonna have for dinner. This is about a pound and a half to maybe, it's probably a pound and a half because I got a few left in there. But these right here are your noodles. Do y'all see this? Very fabulous. How did I make those, you ask? Well, carrots are one of those things that's a real hassle to try to put, put in a spiralizer because they're just not fat enough. But this right here will make you say my name, okay? The Titan brand peeler right here, and this is the Julianne one. And I left something in there. I just put this up. See that? It's got little teeth, and it comes with another one that's just the peeler, the veggie peeler. You can get them at Walmart for about 12 bucks, bed and bath for 14, use your 20% coupon, about uh, about $3 off. Anyway, so you just noodle those down like this. Okay, I didn't peel them or anything. I just rinsed them. All right, then I'm going to also have all of these, which are pea, raw peas sprouted, sprouted peas. Do y'all see that? Pea sprouts. So we're gonna have that, and these are real crunchy. They give you a little crunchy existence. That they're they're great for your digestion, and they're great for live food, live body, enzymatic action, right? Okay, the crunchiness, and they really they just taste like sprouts, like a mung bean sprout or um, neutral, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what this dressing looks like now. What you would do if you don't want to have to dirty your blender up is you would get you a pint size jar, which is this size, okay? See that? And then open it up. It would, this is um, this is wild blueberry powder from Dimergy Place. Friends, this stuff is good. Anyway, it would, of course, be empty. In the bottom of that, you would put about two tablespoons, or a little bit less if you want, about a tablespoon and a half of raw tahini. I like the one by Shirley Bar Living, okay? You can get that online, it's pretty cheap and she used to have free shipping. Um, organic, it's it's great, this stuff's like liquid gold. When you get it, you can even put um, put it in the freezer and that way it's just in there handy for you. So put two tablespoons of that down at the bottom. Then get you about one fourth cup of apple cider vinegar, okay? Put that in there, raw with the mother. Then you're gonna take a lime, okay? And you're gonna cut this in half and you're gonna squeeze half the lime if, if they're really large. These are pretty big, um, so if they're small, you might wanna do a little more, you could taste adjust, okay? So you've got that in there. Then, if you want a little sweet component in there, you put about a half of a tablespoon of lacuma powder. That is optional, you really don't need it, but you could put that in there. Okay, you've got that in there, and then I put, um, about a tablespoon of dulse flex. You could use wakame seaweed. You could put a little salt in there if you eat that, but I don't. Okay, then I also had, this is my favorite brand, Frontier brand, uh, you can't see that, but it's Frontier Co-op brand spices, and this is the cracked pepper, and I love this because it's really like huge pieces, and I love pepper. Put that in there to taste, and then I also like these crushed red chilies. Okay, these are different than just your red pepper flakes. They're very beautiful too. So anyway, it made a little bit more than this because I was doing a little taste test, but as you see, do you see the thickness of that? Are y'all picking that up? Very dense. The point is with me showing you, and add a little water if you need, you're gonna put it all in that container, 
in the pint size jar and you're going to shake vigorously okay and what that's going to give it a little room to shake but it's going to give you about um, a half which give you about a, uh, a half pint okay which is this size so you could actually shake it or stir it in this but if you do that it's kind of hard to get it good and mixed okay but i'll give you about this size dressing now normally i eat more dressing than that but if you're going to take that to a restaurant or something that rocks right because you could just slip this or furthermore you have a little plastic container into your little purse and i don't know if you're a man into your pocket yeah it might look like you're happy to see somebody but that ain't my fault you got your dressing right so anyway what you could do if you want to bulk this dressing up and create more volume with no more fat and no more um, calories because you just don't need it is what you would do is you would keep when you're noodling up your noodles okay what happens is you get this very skinny a little little skinny mini left okay i could have noodled this some more but really like it's a limp noodle isn't it so anyway what you can do is the noodles of um not noodles but the carrots of many colors come in the parsnip okay they come in the, in the yellow like this they also come in my favorite, which which are these. They look purple, but on the inside they're this. Isn't that magical? Look at them. Can can I get an amen on that? Look, and okay, so you, you would think I would throw that away, but no, because waste not, won't not. So let's say you take about a cup of these parsnips, all right? Or um, you could even do like a cup or a cup and a half of celery. You put that in your blender. You put the shake that you just did, or you could have put it all in the blender, but you see what I'm saying, to bulk it up. Put it in the blender. You might need to add a little water, depending on what veggie you're bulking up with. You could bulk up with about a cup of mushrooms. You could do celery, which I like because it gives you an additional salty. If you don't like celery, guess what? You won't taste it. If you have a high-speed blender, it ain't a problem. Okay, you could also do the middle of zucchini squash. I like to peel off the, the outside. That way I still have a creamy looking dressing, but yet um, I've bulked it up, you know, and that's very like a neutral flavor. So let's look at this. Um, I just want you to see the stickability of this because this stuff's ridiculous. It's really tasty. And, uh, and there you go. Do y'all see? Mm -hmm. What do y'all think about that? Can somebody taste this? Mm. Trust me, this is slamming good. Do y'all see this? Mmm. Brian, ma'am. Okay, stop it, Tanya. It's not time to eat. Okay, look. Here's what I'm going to have. So I'm going to have all of these noodles. Okay? Noodle me, will you, with all these noodles. Look how large that is. Then I'm fixing to take this dressing, which I, I told you is very dense right there. But I want... A very wet and savory experience for all these noodles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that dressing into the blender add a little bit of water and add the parsnips which were the white because I want it to look creamy then I'm going to have all that and I'm going to have this with some organic um, lettuce you see this I'm going to have this hello and I'm also going to have this one hmm? hello lover hmm? question is are you not getting your greens on and if not why not why okay and then I'm also gonna have these I probably won't have all these but about half um, sprouted peas yes I will what do y'all think about that I'm gonna come in here so I can see what you're saying and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put that in the dehydrator and um I've had a, a fabulous day today like every day but today just is the weather is beautiful here there y'all are how do I clean the dehydrator? Were you impressed that um, my dehydrator was pristine like it was brand new? Because when I moved to this house, I said to myself, self, you're not moving that nasty dehydrator into your new house. So what I did was I took all the shelves out. First, I took it to the screen porch, okay? I took all the shelves out and I took them out there and I kind of took a, um, a microfiber rack and wiped them real good, okay? Then, 
I laid them on the garage floor, okay? So there's no really like flaky debris on there. And then I sprayed them down really good with white vinegar, okay? And then I, um, I left it for a little bit. And then I took the hose pipe out there and I sprayed them off real good, set them up on their side to dry, brought the dehydrator machine out, brought it to the side. Don't tap it on the floor, that's a bad idea. But I kind of gave, gave it to the bottom, I gave it a little spanky, you know? And, um, and then it dropped all that out. And again with the vinegar and I wiped it out. Then with your Teflex sheets, you, with the grids too out there on the spray down, okay? With the Teflex sheets or Paraflex sheets, you can basically, after you use those, sometimes I'll leave them in there with a slight bit of crust on there, but not usually. I will put them down in the sink, okay? Only about half of it fits down in my sink because I have the nine tray. And if you're wondering, the nine tray is about 25% wider and deeper for about 50% more area on each one, on each tray, so it's not only nine trays versus say your four it's 50 percent bigger on all the trays so anyway you take your sheet and you put it down in the sink you got half of it laying down in there take your sprayer nozzle spray it down and damp it take the other side fold it over mash it together so it's got moisture in there okay leave a little bit come back and then spray it off then you give it a waggle okay you, to get most of the moisture out you bring it over to your dehydrator put it on the tray and let it dry on the grid bam and that's why my dehydrator looks brand new because I certainly use that thing, right? So, anyway, let's see what y'all are saying. Used to not like celery, but un until you try my recipes. Hey, Jess, yeah, you really can't taste it in there. Some people have a, a, a real like, they don't want to do it. Do I usually snack throughout the day or stick to three meals? Who's saying that? See, y'all think I, I can't see, but I, the comments are real light, and unless the background, like, see, the, I have the door behind your comments now, and I can't see them. Um, a smoke show. What I usually do is I get up, and when I'm ready to consume something, I either have a lemon water or a celery juice. Celery juice plain, that's how I do it. I have some videos on the benefits of lemon water and the benefits of lemon pith part one and two and also the benefits of celery juice. And I would encourage you lovingly to watch those if you don't know anything about it because it can change your life. Okay, then for breakfast and lunch, I typically have a smoothie. I have a green smoothie. I pack at least a half, sometimes way more greens in each smoothie. I balance those out with the amount of fruit that I need because I'm getting my calories through the day from fruit, basically. But I'm always balancing it out because can you eat too much fruit? Well, can you eat too many calories? Yeah, you can. Can you under eat? Yes. You need everything you need, nothing you don't. So you're gonna put some base fruit in there, which is more calorie dense fruit, something that's got soluble and insoluble fiber to give a good blend and give a good um, congruency to the smoothie. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of chia seeds for balance for every amino acid. My little body needs to build protein and also to help the that little bit of fat, it's a very a small amount, about half a tablespoon, helps the the greens and the nutrients absorb into my body. So I'm going to do that for breakfast and lunch. I'm also usually going to add berries in there. I'm going to have some on the side because I want the phytonutrients and antioxidants in the berries, and I'm going to have those. Now, if I don't want to have a smoothie, I'm going to take that same component, okay? All those components that I would have had for breakfast. As if I'm on Raw Vegan Survivor and they've dropped this box off and I've had to pry it open with my toenails that are so long because I've been there for months. They've dropped this off for breakfast and guess what? The components in there are all I get, all right? Now, I don't know why there's a blender on the island, but there is. So I could blend or I could chew the food, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. I could put the chia seeds in water. I could put little berries in the water. I could have, say, bananas and greens whatever but that's what I have to work with and that's what I do and I've been doing it now for 11 years and before that it was five years I was whole food plant-based and it took me a long time to get to the ideal situation for myself and so I'm just sharing that with you so for breakfast and lunch that's kind of what I'm doing then for snack I'm gonna have some fruit for high-flying energy but guess what I don't want to up and down so I'm gonna bring the plane up nice and high with some fruit for energy and I'm gonna give it some longevity and stay ability up there right 
with balancing it with celery or greens yet again that's what i'm going to do and then for dinner i'm going to have a mammoth array of raw veggies i'm going to rotate those seasonally and i'm going to choose things on the sale table i'm going to make it work and not make an excuse like i make this happen on about 60 dollars a week every week and i have for a long time um then at night i'm going to have my over or outside plant fat other than this little bit of chia seeds i've had in the earlier part of the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that amount of fat I want to have. Furthermore, with your fat, I would encourage you lovingly to watch my video, how much fat and what type of fat, because you need a good ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. Do you understand? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? So let's say you got a one-to-one -one ratio or even a one-to-two, meaning three to six, okay? Because too many omega-6 fats, which let's say avocados, you're gonna create a low-grade pro-inflammatory situation. That's not what we want. Am I saying you can never eat avocados? No, I'm not, but I'm saying if you choose your fat tonight with avocado and you realize, because you're not just waiting on somebody to tell you what's going on, you're investigating what's going on, right? You're proactive, not reactive. So anyway, you've got your omega-6, you know that. Still, you've got omega-3 from your greens and some of your veggies and all these different things, but mainly your fat from the day came from omega-6. There are a little omega-9, which are neutral, but mainly six, you got that? So then the next night, you're gonna focus on something. Maybe you're gonna have your dressing, maybe you're gonna have some zoodles and you're gonna have like a tomatoey kind of base sauce. So then you're gonna focus more on omega-3. You understand that? So let's say you're choosing flax seeds. You realize you need to buy those raw and whole, and you realize that if you buy them grounded ahead of time, they number one can become rancid. Who wants that? Number two, they lose nutrients, and that's not what we want. We want all the nutrients every dang day. So anyway, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grind those on the spot when you're fixing to use them. That is going to be um, your fat in your dressing base, right? So now we know one day we had omega-6, next day we have omega-3. You've got a one-to-one -one ratio. Do you understand what I'm saying? You could even split the fat. You could have um, a little bit of chia seeds in your dressing, and you could have a little bit of almond butter if you wanted. Understanding what kind of fats are what. I have a whole talk on that, so you might want to check it out if that interests you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my fat that I'm wanting to have that night. I'm going to stretch it out, known as bulking it up, in either a dressing, a soup, or a sauce, all right? Dressing, soup, or sauce. Then I'm going to always have a little bit of seaweed because I want that hormone balance. I want the iodine and the natural sodium. So I'm not going around saying, oh, if only I had the salty taste. I don't wish I had anything. I have everything I need. I, I'm not driven around by any kind of cravings other than wanting all that food that's in there right now while I'm talking to y'all. You know what I mean? So then you're gonna stretch that out. So now you have this huge amount, just like I showed you how that little amount that was like a shake and take to the restaurant, bulking that up and having all the dang dressing at home, right? There is no place I'd rather eat than my kitchen of love and light where I get all the food just like I want it and I know what to expect from my body and my body knows what to expect from me. So let's say you make that dressing or you turn it into a sauce, all right? Like I just told you about, a good recipe is the best raw vegan spaghetti sauce ever. You can find that here on my YouTube. Use my search bar. Not the main search bar, but mine and then it will come up. Okay, let's say you stretch it into that. You got this bulked up existence or you did a soup. Like let's say it tastes like cheese soup. Tastes like cheese soup makes about half of a Vitamix full of uh, my soup. You can blend it up to warm to touch. People always say, Tanya, aren't you cold? Don't you eat cold food in the winter? No, I really don't. I don't eat nice cream in the, in the winter. And then if I'm gonna have smoothies, they're typically room temperature. But let's say in my evening meal, maybe I popped it in a dehydrator like I'm fixing to have that. That is a warm existence. Understand that a hot tub is typically about 104 degrees. And if your food is gently warmed not to over 118 degrees Fahrenheit, your food's still raw and none of the nutrients were destroyed, okay? And we, we can have a vegan community all day long eating vegan junk food, eating vegan burrito, eating contest with all of these processed foods. Um, whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. And that's the basis of your meal rock on but that's not how I eat because I'm eating for longevity 
You know what I mean? So anyway, let's say you have this soup. That soup's got almond butter in it. We realize that that's an omega-6, so that would be your one. Tomorrow night, I'm gonna have hemp seeds, more higher on the omega-3. A Little bit of six in there, but a lot of threes. You see what I'm saying? So let's say you have tastes like cheese soup. You put your amount of fat in there, okay? I use about two tablespoons of the almond butter into that soup. I'm going to blend it to warm, and then I'm going to take some, I'll have greens and a salad on the side with really no fat. I'm just going to maybe flip it, lemon or lime, apple cider vinegar, put some Frontier brand organic spices or herbs, very delicious. Maybe I've got lots of um, the decadent heirloom tomatoes that you could just eat like candy all day. So I've got, it's a very moist situation on the salad. And then I'm gonna have this platter of raw broccoli florets. And I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna dip those little trees in the cheese soup. Trees and cheese, bam. What do y'all think about that? That's how you do it every dang day. Are you getting enough water in that situation? Well, when you got up on rise, you can count that celery juice as moisture coming in. So let's say you've either had 32 ounces of celery juice or you had 32 ounces of lemon water. Right there, you got a quarter of a gallon, right? Then in your smoothies or with your breakfast and lunch, you're probably having at least 16 ounces of water in each of those right there. You're up to half a gallon. So during the rest of the day, maybe have a little 16 ounces here, maybe with your snack, a little 16 ounces at night, you've just slammed in three quarters of a gallon of water, which is enough for most people. And you've got a lot of water-rich fruits and veggies, bam. Like greens, for example, are mostly water and all the nutrients. So anyway, then after your dinner, if you're hungry because you, you wanted the savory, now you wanted the sweet, and now you're like, well, I can just have this nine banana ice cream. Okay, well, you can have that before bed, and you can take that 900 calories that's gonna sit in your guts and keep your body from regenerating at night in a restorative mode, and it's still in digestion, and you don't understand why you've had this abombo combo because you didn't let this fat digest that absorbs and, um, digest and assimilates at a slower rate and then you've got and it's still sitting there okay then you've got bananas coming in which are a fast moving engine so you've got this box car sitting here then you've got this engine coming in and it has become a train wreck also known as a bombo combo so don't do it furthermore you've had everything you need nothing you don't so if you want something after that might i suggest lovingly that you have a fennel tea dandelion tea maybe a uh, ginger lemon tea why because first of all it could be a ritualistic experience for you to remember that hey the kitchen's closed you must parent yourself dinner's over clean up brush your teeth walk the dog have a bath have a hot tea something Eating without abandon, I see this at Costco's all the time. People are there, it's like two in the afternoon and they're just like stopping, is it your snack time? Are you snacking on her? She's like, it's like people don't care. Why? Because food is a recreational activity for a slow though precise mass destruction of your health. But that's another story. So anyway, the kitchen's closed. So you've got this tea, when you've got fennel tea, dandelion tea, ginger lemon tea, for example, or peppermint tea, that helps your digestion. So therefore, when you go to bed, you're in a calming state, and when you wake up, your tummy's flat. And who don't want that, right? Who doesn't want to start their day off like that? Because you, when you start out bloated and lethargic and all that, you're tired because you didn't sleep well, and you think you slept, but you were digesting. Digestion takes more of the vital force or energy drain on your body than anything else and anything else going on in your body. So do we think we want our body to be digesting while we're sleeping? We don't understand why we get up and we're tired. That's why. So if you can eat at least three hours before you're going to bed, really more than that is better. That's just some tips and tricks with Tanny. What do y'all think? <laughs> Anyway, I won't just say all that, but it's just like, it's like a roller coaster. And once you, you know, click, 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 and once you start going down, there's just no stopping it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, let's have a quick tune. Just a second, because YouTube, they don't enjoy me that much, and that's why. And I hope you make that dressing, and I hope you have your greatest day ever. You know, because we've never seen this one before. We've never seen it before. And you don't even have to wait till you're the greatest you. To, to you, you've healed all this, you've, all these things, your husband's side treat you nice, you've got a husband, you've you got a date, you got rid of a date, you've got a good job, none of that. Today, when you're perfectly imperfect, right where you are, you know what I'm saying? Loving yourself, self-love, 
to show love, to receive love. You know what I mean? Right where you are today. And I love you. I hope you know that. <laughs> ¶¶